What's going on everybody? It's Car Mind from Bar Mind Tech and today we're going to be talking about a project called Bezel. So if you're not familiar, Bezel is a monitoring system you could use on your home lab. It can monitor your Linux systems and your Docker systems and give you all the system stats. So I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So this is my instance of Bezel that I'm running right now. As you can see, I only have a few systems connected to it. I have my Docker host and my two Pi-hole LXC containers. It breaks down and gives you the usage of the different parts of the system, like the CPU, the memory, disk, if you have a GPU, the network, temperature, if it can get it, and the agent version that's deployed onto the host. If you click on it, it can give you a better breakout, and you can really get some graphs to visualize what's going on on the host and have an idea of you know the system usage and what's going on. You could also change the time frame, so if I want to go back 24 hours, let's say, or 12 hours, I can break out and I can see the time difference. So I can go over, you know, if I, I can tell that there's an issue with my system. I can go back, I can see, you know, hey, the CPU was pinned at, you know, 11 p.m. last night, stuff like that. And I can identify what's going on with my systems a little bit easier. This is a container that one of my friends has actually been running and he's been swearing by because sometimes what happens in Proxmox is that it'll tell you that the CPU or the, you know, the memory is pinned and it really isn't because the QEMU agent might not be installed or, you know, it might just be reading wrong. So a lot of the time the Proxmox system stats aren't right. And he goes back to bezel and he's like, Oh, look, you know, it's, it's not pinned. You know, the system's actually running just fine. So bezel is going to be a great tool with having your home lab to really identify what's going on with your systems and the hardware inside of them. To deploy this project, we're going to be using the Proxmox helper scripts. I'm going to be installing it on the bar my tech server and we're going to get it all set up. I'm going to show you how to deploy agents out. So how this works is there's like the master container that's going to run the main server. And then from there, there's going to be agents that you install on the Linux host or the Docker host. It also works with Kubernetes and some other stuff, but for the most part, we're going to just be working with Docker and Linux. I'm going to show you how to set it up for both of them right now. So we are going to be working with the helper scripts today. I'm going to come over to your view scripts and then over here in monitoring analytics, we can come over here and here's bezel. So if you're interested, there's the site, the bezel, you can check it out. They also have the documentation, which explains pretty much everything you need to know. I mean, there's a lot of additional monitoring and features that are covered in this that I'm not going to really talk about today because I don't think they're necessary for the average home lab user. Really what I'm looking for is just something that can monitor my systems and make sure everything's okay. So to start off, we just need to install the container. So I'm just going to copy the script over here and I go back to the bar my tech server and then I'm going to open this up. And then we're just going to paste the script in. I'm going to click yes. And then just like the other helper scripts, it's going to ask if I want to create the program. I'm going to say yes. And it's going to ask if I'm going to use the default settings. I'm going to change mine like I always do because I need to change the VM ID. If you don't run a cluster or you don't need to change anything, you could just say default settings. I'm going to just change it so I can change my VM ID and we'll be right back. So I just ran through really quick. You can see it's all set to install now. So I'm just going to click yes. And then I'm going to let this install it. It's really quick. It only took a minute or so, and then we'll be all set. So one thing I did want to mention, like I was saying this, so like bezel has the central server that has the monitoring out of it. It deploys agents to your nodes. You want to monitor, like if you want to monitor your LXC containers, maybe you have an Ubuntu VM, a Docker host, that's how it's going to work. So over here we have the install for the hub installation, but over here we're looking at in agent installation. So this is going to be what, you know, is getting installed on the host. So like if we're using Docker, it's going to give us a prompt over here. It'll give us a Docker compose to copy, or it's going to give us a Linux command to copy. And that's what we're going to install. And when we get there, I'll show you how that works. The setup should be all set. So I'm just going to pop this back up and you can see it is, I'm going to copy this, go over to it in my browser. And then we're just going to sign up with it and make my account and then we'll be right back. So when you first sign in, it's going to be pretty plain and it's going to be in light mode. So I'm just going to change it over to dark because I don't like light mode. It's too bright. And then really there's not much going on. So we just need to set up to add some systems. So over here in the top right, there's going to be add system. And then we can start naming out what our nodes are going to be. So I'm just going to turn a couple of mine on so we can work with them and then we'll go from there. So to start off, I'm going to show you how to set it up in Docker. So I do have Portainer set up. If you don't have Portainer, that's fine. It can still give you a Docker compose or a Docker run, and you could just run it in the command line if that's how you want to do it. But I'm going to work with Portainer because it's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to name it Docker. And then just make sure you have the Docker tag select because there's two. There's Docker and binary. So Docker is going to be the one that you're going to need. Then you're going to get the host IP. So for me, mine is .88. Yours is going to be whatever it is. 
You don't need to worry about the port because this is how it's going to communicate back to the bezel server. And then there's just the public key for SSH. Over here, you can get the Docker Compose command. So I'm just going to copy that. We're going to close this and then we'll click Add System. Now you can see that it's showing up, but it's not connected. That's because we need to install it. I'm going to come over to Portainer. I'm going to click on my instance and then we're going to come to Templates. I'm going to do a custom template and add a custom template. We're going to call it Bezel. I'm just going to give it the description of Bezel again. And then over here, I'm just going to paste in that Compose file. We're going to create the template. We're going to click on the template. I'm just going to name the stack. And now we should be all set. So now I can deploy the stack. And then you can see over here, it's going to start running. So if I come back to dashboard, you can see here's the bezel agent. And if I refresh the page in a second, they should come up because it's going to start communicating. And if I actually come over to the logs and bezel, you can see that it's starting the SSH connection. And it's going to start communicating back to that server and it's going to start working. So I'm just going to come over here. You can see now that it's green and it's pulling some system info so I can click on it and break out and have a little more data to see what's going on. Of course, it needs to populate because it can't go backwards and pull data from you know previous time. So it's only going to be able to go forward and then we'll start to have more graphs of what's going on. So that's how we set up for a Docker instance. Now I'm going to show you how to set up for an Ubuntu instance. So I just have my Cloudflare tunnel that we worked on a, a little bit ago, and that's an LLXC container, but that's running a Linux distro. So what we're going to do is come back over here. We're going to click Add System. I'm going to call it Cloudflare. Uh, I just need to grab the IP really quick, so I'm just going to do that. And you can see it's 124, so it's even easier. So I'm just going to type that in again. And now we're going to click the binary because it's going to be the Linux command. So I'm just going to copy the Linux command. You can see over here it opens up the box and it has the, the curl command. I'm going to close that back out. We're going to click add system. And then I'm just going to open this up and paste that in. And now it's going to start running through. And then it's going to ask me if I want to make it so it automatically updates. I'm going to say yes. Now you see it's all set. So if I come back over here to bezel, it should just again take a minute and then we'll be able to get it going. And it'll be coming up any second. So we'll be right back. And it just took a minute or two and now you can see Cloudflare is up and similarly I can click on it and it'll break out with more info and it's going to be able to monitor I'm going to get all of this system information just like I am for Docker. Now you can do this on any of your hosts as long as they're running Linux or Docker. There's also ways to deploy it with Ansible. You can uninstall it. There's Docker Swarm. There's HashiCorp Nomad. I, I don't really know what this is. And then there's Kubernetes. So you can really deploy this in a few different ways. It's only going to work on Linux or Docker based systems. It looks like you could do something with Home Assistant as well. So another feature that Bezel has is that you can send notifications. More particularly, you can send Discord notifications. So if I come up over here to the settings icon, I can go to notifications and you can see there's webhooks and then I could add a URL. So we're just going to open up Shouter, this link over here. It's, it's how it integrates, so it makes it a little bit different on integrating your webhook. So over here, I'm going to be using Discord, but you could use any of these and it kind of breaks it down of how you need to format it so it recognizes. So I'm going to show you really quick how to do that. So I just made a quick webhook in one of my Discord servers that I'm going to be using for my alerts. So you can see over here is the full link. And if we actually click on the Discord, it's going to break it down even better how to do it. So you can see this is the original link. So this matches up and this is how it needs to be formatted oh, down here. So I already pasted it. So I'm just going to do Discord colon slash slash and then we're going to do the token ID. So you can see over here in the reference, the token is the second part up to the slash in the middle. And then we're going to do at and then this first string up to the slash is the other portion for the webhook ID. And then I can come over here and copy this. I can come back over to my sentence and bezel. I can paste it in over here and I can test it out. So I'll show you really quick that we did get the test in Discord. And over here you can see here's my bezel channel and in here is my test that I just did. So now that this is set up further for our webhooks for to send notifications, we can configure notifications over here on the homepage. So we could just click on the bell on our node. So if you want different ones for different nodes, you could do it or you could do it for all systems and then you just overwrite it. So if I want to get the status, I can get notifications for everything. 
and it has like a threshold. So if it falls in between threshold throughout a period, it'll send notifications and we'll just close that out. And then I can do the same thing over here. So let's say I want to turn all of them on again. If it falls in the threshold that, you know, it's down for 10 minutes, it's going to send me an alert. So this host is down currently. So I should get an alert shortly to let me know. And now you can see after we set up the web hooks for the alerts, you can actually see like my system went down and it'll also send notifications when the alerts are in the threshold. So, you know, if it falls in the thresholds between this, you know, if the disk usage is too high for 10 minutes, you'll get a discord notification to know, Hey, something's wrong. You should go check out the systems and make sure everything's okay. It really levels up the system because now only do you get a knock monitor, you get an SNMP monitor. So you could also see, you know, the system stats as well. So it really makes this a very powerful monitoring system as well as alerting system. Very beneficial to have in the home lab, especially that it's all free. But pretty much this is bezel. We can change our views if you want. So you could have it gridded and then set up in the table. You can change what kind of stats you, you know, you want to see and how they're sorted. And like I said, you can click on it and get better visualizations in the charts. One other thing you can do, so if you have your bezel system up and running, you can come over to settings and then there's the YAML config and you can export the YAML file because, you know, maybe you want a backup of it. It does have a warning saying there's potential data loss. Being that we are running this in a Proxmox LXC, your best bet would probably be to just come over and run a quick backup and save this somewhere, whether it's locally or on your remote drive or in your Proxmox backup server. Probably be a lot easier to keep it safe and have backups of a working system that way. But yeah, that's Bezel. That's everything that it does. And it's a nice monitoring tool to really have good visuals of what's going on with your home lab systems. That's how we set up Bezel using the Proxmox helper scripts. As always, I'll have a link down to the Proxmox helper scripts and the Bezel site if you want to check any of it out on your own. It's a super simple install. It's super simple to deploy and get everything up and working with the agents. And it just works. Bezel is a nice tool to have in your home lab so you can really keep an eye on what's going on. Like I was saying, maybe, you know, your system drops out or, you know, it's, it's spiking. You don't know why. At least now you can have visuals to see what's going on at what time frame. You can see, you know, the memory is pinned, the CPU is pinned, the hard drive is pinned, whatever it might be. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll have links to all the gear down below that I use in my home lab if you ever want to get any of it for yourself. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you want to join up. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.